and the chairman of the Chicago Cubs, Tom Ricketts, is with us here at Wrigley. Uh, Tom, thanks for joining us tonight. No, it's great to be here. Great to have you guys here, too. And you just told us, we knew you were from the area, but you're really from the area. I mean, just a building right across the street? Well, when I was single, I used to live in one of the uh, buildings right across the really? street here. Yeah, yeah, and right above a bar and come to a lot of games. And nice, and you met your wife? Center field bleachers. Nice. <laughs> well, let's talk about some of the recent events. Obviously, your team has been in the news for a number of reasons recently. Let's start with the dismissal of general manager Jim Henry. Uh, why, why now, and what next? Okay, well, obviously, uh, Jim's been a terrific general manager for the Cubs for a long time, and, and he has a, had, had a great career here. Um, you know, we just got to the point that we thought that maybe um, we hadn't quite won enough games in the last couple of years, and, and it, it might help to uh, just get some, some fresh leadership and, and see if we can't take the team from where Jim got it to to the next level. Well, I know you you can't mention names or talk about specific candidates, but tell us what your philosophy is going forward when you choose a new GM. Well, you know, I think that, uh, you know, what we talked about the other day, you know, in our, in our first press conference was that we're going to look at someone with a real strong focus in player development, someone who can add some analytical expertise to the organization, and someone who comes from a winning culture. Um, you know, I think that those three things, if we start there, uh, we really can't go wrong. Do you have a list in your head, or do you have a time frame when you want to get this done? Well, the, um, I don't really have a list. Uh, time frame-wise, obviously, you really can't have a lot of the more substantive discussions until after the season is over. Um, so I think we have the next six or seven weeks to be as prepared as possible to kind of think through a list of potential candidates and get out and, and talk to who's available as soon as we can and then hopefully get it done as soon as baseball, as soon as we can after the season because you don't have much time before the free agent market opens and the winter meetings and all that stuff. So... And on top of that, you have to get your organizational meetings in there somewhere. So you want to be you want to be pretty uh, pretty nimble once the, once the game's in. Two and two. How do you balance, Tom? I mean, this is a big city. This is a big market team, and obviously, I mean, you're part of the fan base. Everybody wants a winner. How do you balance? You know, go out, free agents, try to win soon versus more of a long-term goal within you know developing within the organization. Well, I think you have to start with the realization that there really are no shortcuts. Um, the way you're going to be consistently successful is through player development. We, uh, we went the extra, uh, extra mile on, um, on our draft picks this year. And that's where you got to start. You got to bring in the right guys. You got to give them good coaching. And the other thing we've worked really hard on is facilities. We got to improve the facilities that we have throughout the, throughout the organization. But the, um, you know, there are no shortcuts. If you find a free agent, just be thoughtful about uh, the kind of contract you give them and how it affects, how it will affect the, um, the, you know, the organization in the future. Well, Tom, your family has purchased this team, and your sister, your brother, and yourself are actually running the baseball team, which is very commendable that you're, you're there, you're going to work it, you're not just going to say, hey, we have this on our assets sheet, we're going to put sweat, we're going to put our time, we're going to put our, our effort into making this what you want it to be. Yeah, all the, uh, all the siblings, I have two brothers and a sister, and we're all on the board, and, and I'm here every day. Um, it's, it's, my, it's my job to, uh, you know, and we've got a lot of work to do, both on the baseball side, as we're talking about tonight, and on, and on the business side, too. There's a lot of things that, that we can be doing better. So it's a, it's a big project, but I think we're off to an okay start, and we're looking forward to uh, keeping it going. Reed Johnson, the better. You were in the bleachers earlier tonight? I was, yeah. yeah. I went out and said hi to some folks, and I usually walk around the game three or four innings and hand out baseballs to kids, tickets for people in the upper deck, that kind of thing. What, what's the message, what's the prevailing message Cub fans give to you? What, well, what, what do they want? Cub fans are the greatest fans on the planet. There's no question about that. They're very, very supportive. Um, you know, they just want to they just want to see the organization take that next step. And, um, you know, if, if what happened this, you know, this past couple of days helps them, helps us do that, then they're 100% behind it. Is there anything you can tell us that we don't know about Carlos Zambrano and his situation right now? Yeah, the only thing we can say about Carlos, obviously, what his actions in, in Atlanta were unacceptable, and and not what you not what you want from anyone on any team anywhere. But um, you know, the fact is that it's it's you know it's the union's involved now, so we just got to play it out and see how it turns out. Are you open to him pitching for the Cubs again? I don't know. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I I, I, I it's a hard I have a hard time imagining that. But the um, like I said, you know, it, I got to see how it all works out.